All right, it's time for episode six, season one, homebrew how to. We're gonna see our last homebrewer. Who is it, Juan? We're gonna see John May. He lives out in Smithfield. He's part of Ham's uh, homebrew club out there, and uh, he'll be he'll be brewing an IPA in his kitchen. So let's go check him out. Hydrate before you drink. We're gonna go see John May. Let's go. John, how's it going? Hey, gentlemen, good to see you. Good Come to see in. you. Hey, we got uh, Brian from uh, Tradition and we got Reese Brian, from Draft Top. Good to nice see you. you. Nice to meet you, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Welcome to uh, the Beer Closet Brewing Company, my friend. All right, well, let's see it. <laughs> I'm John May. I've been uh, home brewing for about seven years now. I started uh, when my son, who was in high school at the time, had given me a Mr. Brew Kit, a Mr. Home Brew Kit, for, um, for a birthday present. And I uh, was doing two gallon batches on my stovetop and uh, had an opportunity to experiment with lots of different recipes. When he turned 21, I had purchased him a starter extract uh, kit and uh, about two weeks after his birthday, I confiscated it from him. I think I was more interested in it than he was. And uh, I started extract brewing from there. I try to do uh, a batch a month. And uh, you know, quite frankly, it's just a lot of fun to, to give away to friends and clients. So we're gonna start with two gallons in our main pot. And then I'm gonna do a, a two and a half gallons in our main pot. I'm gonna do a half a gallon in a secondary pot. Uh, I'm a big fan of extract brewing because I log a lot of hours and I often work on the weekends and extract brewing I can get started and brew, clean up, start up, brew and clean up and get it all done in about two hours. So we're going to heat this water to 160, 170 degrees and then this we're going to boil this section to pour over our spent grains. So dropping in our grains, we hit 160 degrees, 165 degrees. So we are going to let this steep for uh, for 30 minutes, and then we're going to crank it up to a boil. In the meantime, I'm going to wait about 10 minutes. I'm going to boil this second pot of water to get extra sugars out of the grains. I will uh, use a strainer to pour some boiling water to. Uh, Try to get my alcohol content as high as I can. So we brought Warwick County Wheat over here to Beer Closet Brewing. Um, Warwick County Wheat is Tradition's uh, take on our German style Hefeweizen. Uh, brewed with all German wheat and barley, uh, German hops and German yeast. Uh, 5%, so nice, clean, traditional uh, German Hefeweizen. Let's get one over to John and uh, drink top. Sweet. There you go. Yeah, man. It worked well. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. So when you're when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're monitoring it because you don't want to have a boil over. Um, so after it starts to boil, you pull the pot off the burner. Uh, another reason you want to do that is when you're pouring in your malt extract, you don't want it to burn on the bottom of your pot. And I'm telling you this as lessons learned from from experience. So you pull it off. I'm going to pour in all my extract because my friends call me cheap. I prefer to be called frugal. I've never purchased. A spoon. I always use my big old barbecue spatula here. Our first hop addition is a magnum. It's going to go in for 60 minutes. All right, all the way till flame out. I'm using a, a hop spider here to minimize the amount of sediment I have. We got 15 minutes left on our boil. I'm going to add some Irish moss. Um, the purpose of the Irish moss is to help solids sediment fall to the bottom uh, so your beer is is more clear. Uh, at flame out we got to cool the beer 
uh, rapidly and uh, I have uh, a tool to do that but it's usually for outside brewing so for inside brewing what I do is of the five uh, jugs of uh, distilled water I freeze one and then I'm going to pour the wort over the top of this one gallon of block of ice uh, in my fermenting bucket to cool it quickly and then I've got one gallon I've set aside that's refrigerated that should bring it all the way back down uh, to under 80 degrees where I can pitch the yeast and I don't have to wait around for it to cool uh, for a long time. Let's talk about distilled water real quick. If somebody asked me about distilled water I would say it's not typically recommended because it's missing some of the minerals and stuff that you might need in some beer. Um, but John uses distilled water and he's getting great results and people enjoy his beer so it's all in your preference and, um, and your brew day and what you like to use and if it's proven to be uh, to come out with some good beer, by all means, continue it. A half ounce of three different styles of hops. First is a Citra. Second one is Simcoe. Again, all these ingredients came from Bruin Bottle, Newport News. Go see my friend, Tuan. I'll drink to that. Going to let this thing drain oh, geez, through my strainer. Just like that. Remember, there's always a hiccup on brewing. Things don't always go exactly the way you plan, and uh, sometimes there's a little glitch here or there, but I think there's a pretty wide margin of error, and it still turns into good drinkable beer. The big thing you want to be careful about, as we talked about, is sanitation. Uh, you know, if you don't sanitize your kitchen, sanitize your uh, equipment, and you get a little bug, that can ruin your batch of beer, ruin your day pretty darn quick. Pour this hot wort. Most instructions say you put this in, a, in a, a bath of ice. From my experience, the ice melts very quickly, and then it takes a long time to bring the temperature down. For kitchen home brewing, this is the fastest method I have found. Gets me below um, 75, 80 degrees. Now I'm going to pour in my gallon of refrigerated water. Don't bring that down. Yeah, so this recipe calls for adding hops after the uh, wort is chilled down. So I don't want to dump them in the bucket because uh, that might add sediment. So I want to put them in these little hop bags. So uh, this dose is going to add uh, a little bit more bitterness, but uh, a lot more of that citrus flavor you get in an IPA and some uh, some fruity flavors. So we're going to toss these in and then on an IPA we're going to do what's called dry hopping and that is adding additional hops in the, the secondary and that particular addition that is more about aroma that, that gives you a whole uh, a nice fragrance. Uh, recipe call says we can do it as long as we're below 80 we're right now at 79 degrees according to this so uh, I got my sanitized shears and my my dry ale yeast from Bruin Bottle. Mm -hmm. Just gonna pour this across the top. Now a lot of times you don't want to aerate your beer. That's why you don't pour it from one bucket to another, and that's why you use a siphon. But this is really the only time you can aerate. So I'm gonna use my high-tech spatula here. Let's throw this in. Now we're just going to go ahead and cap this bad boy off. We've got five gallons at 79 degrees. Now we're going to set this right in there. And then we should have some good fermentation starting maybe about this time tomorrow. And off into the beer closet it goes. You want to keep these in a, you want to keep your buckets 
Get a, uh, get a uh, cool dry spot. The beer closet works ideal for that. All right, guys, welcome back to Traditions. We're here wrapping up episode six of Homebrew How To. You might hear some uh, cornhole in the background. They're down there doing a tournament, but we're gonna push through. So we're back here with John, the brewer, and you might recognize Pat here from Draft Top. Uh, he was on Shark Tank. And so uh, he is filling in for Brian. Brian is out, he had a little bit of eye trouble, but uh, he'll be back for, uh, for our wrap up. So before we get to cracking on these beers, John, thank you first of all for letting us get into your kitchen and, and brewing with you, but tell us a little bit about the beer that you brew. It's my pleasure sincerely. It was a lot of fun having you guys over. It's nice to have an audience sometimes. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, so this is an East Coast IPA. After you guys had left, I did two more sessions of dry hopping. Uh, I added more hops four days into it, and then again, eight days into it. Dry hops are designed to uh, get you more aroma, and, but not add bitterness to, to the beer. Um, our ABB came in just under 6%, about 5.8%, and I think it turned out pretty good. Nice, so we should get a lot of... You should get a lot of aroma from it. You should it. get a lot of uh, food aroma. Hopping. You should get a lot of citrus flavor, but still have some of the bitterness of, that you would get in nice. the IPA. All right. Yeah. And I can't wait to try it. Why don't we crack them open? Let's crack them open. Right. Yeah. Cheers. Yes. Awesome. Definitely getting the aroma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a citrusy, fruity smell. It's nice and uh, nice and smooth. And a couple of these are really all you need at uh, oh, yeah. 5.8%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice and clean. That's a, that's a good one, John. Yeah. Good job. Well, thanks. Like I said, it was a lot of fun having you guys out. Yeah. So let me point out again that, so this is an extract. Uh, usually here at a big brewery, you know, they're using all grains. So in this kitchen, to keep it nice, short brew day and uh, keep it, you know, compact, he uses an extract brewer. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can get good beer both ways. So, okay. yeah, good one. All right, so that wraps it up. Episode six. Next time you see us, you'll be joining us here at Traditions with the rest of the brewers from all the previous episodes. And uh, hopefully we'll be brewing up something good in a collaboration.